Some drivers say that they're built differently. So how can you overcome a weight disadvantage in go-karting? I weigh 65 kilos, but I'm going to handicap myself for this experiment and I'm going to add 50 kilos of ballast weight in the form of 30 kg of lead, which I'll add to the cart, a 10 kilo weighted vest, which I'll be wearing, two and a half kilos of ankle weights on each leg, and finally five kilos of weight, which I'll be sitting on. So this makes me the equivalent of a 115 kilo driver. Now straight off the bat, my best lap time at 65 kilos was nearly three seconds faster than my best lap at 115 kilos. Driving with the ballast weight caused my cart to be very sluggish. It had terrible acceleration, which meant I'd lose a lot of time on corner exits. So to mitigate this, it was important for me to take a narrower line in certain corners. Because your speed is already compromised by your weight, it's important that you don't waste meters by going all the way to the outside edge and coming back all the way to the inside edge. Rather approach certain corners from the middle of the track, so this way you're actually saving meters and reducing the distance. In the session with 65 kilos, I had to brake multiple times across the duration of a lap. On the other hand, during the 115 kilo session, I was able to drive each lap without having to brake. Rather, the quickest way I found was to lift off the gas pedal for specific corners. And those corners were the hairpin turns, because with the ballast weight, my overall speed was already quite low. So when I would brake for those turns, my revs would almost go down to zero. But if I took the corner flat out, I would find myself sliding slightly, which would hamper my exit speed. So by lifting just before the corner and then initiating the turn in, I could get right back onto the accelerator pedal and carry good exit speed. Let's compare my best lap when I was lifting for some corners compared to my best lap where I drove the entirety of it flat out with my foot pinned to the gas pedal. So as we start both laps now, we're heading downhill through turns one, two, and three. Notice how we keep it in the middle of the track, minimizing those meters. It's important on entry to turn four, we are quite wide here because this turn is taken flat out. The ballast weight combined with subtle turning allowed us to take a smooth turn there and we don't lose any time, no need to lift. On entry to turn seven, notice how we don't use the full width of the track. Again, keeping it quite narrow, normally we'd put about half of the cart on the green. But in this case, our revs are so low that we don't need to waste that many, those extra meters. And now down the back straight, heading down to turn eight, the hairpin turn. Watch on the left-hand side how we go deep into the corner, lift and initiate the turn in, whereas on the right-hand side, we're flat out but the real difference will be exposed on exit because as we approach the blue and white strip on the right hand side, by lifting at the hairpin turn, I gain superior exit speed over the lap where I took it flat out. Again, coming to the second hairpin turn, lift, initiate the turn in, get back onto the gas. Whereas on the lap on the right hand side, my tires are scrubbing because I've taken it flat out and it's a tight turn. So on exit, I've lost further time. Coming to the final sector now, notice how we take these last few corners quite narrow. On entry, we're almost to the right hand side of the track. We don't wanna waste those meters. It's important to keep your steering smooth and make sure you're really leaning your body to the outside through these corners. Again, entering the corner from the middle, taking a middle apex, and now we've got the final two corners ahead of us. Don't waste meters, keep it quite narrow as you can see on entry. Take a close apex for the final two corners. And you can see the lap where I did lift, it's comfortably pulling ahead now as we enter the final straight all the way up to the finish line. Let's see what the difference is going to be between the lap with lifting and without lifting. So my best lap was 108.502 with lifting and it was 108.829 without lifting. A three tenths of a second difference. So the conclusion is you must drive according to your weight. A heavyweight driver cannot expect to use the tactics of a lightweight driver and expect to get the same lap time. So for example, instead of braking, you could just try lifting. And instead of taking a wide line, you can try and take a narrow line when cornering. Let me know what techniques you would use to overcome a weight disadvantage in go-karting. And if you did enjoy today's video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe and perhaps share this video with one of your friends. But until the next video guys, keep karting and carry on.